I will be talking to you to, uh, today about something which is perhaps unusual for CVPR, and that is image compression. And you might ask, uh, why are we talking about this at CVPR? The reason is because we are using uh, machine learning in order to achieve compression, I th and I think it is quite an appropriate audience for this. So first off, why uh, are we interested in compression and why image compression? Well, it's because um, there are billions, uh, if not, of course, trillions and even more images on the internet. And if you are able to compress these images better, we would be able to save a lot of bandwidth and a lot of storage for everybody. In the title of my talk, I have the word full resolution. So why is that? The reason is because there has been some work back in the 90s and early 2000s which have tried to address the task of image compression with neural networks. But almost always, they were limited to very small resolution images. And this work, as far as we are aware, is the first work that can generalize to any resolution image and provides a capability which can be expressed as using a single model for any image that you would like to compress. So normally, when we would like to address image compression, what would we want uh, if you were to, say, have a competitive method that would be deployable? First, we'd like to outperform existing methods in some metric. And unfortunately, in the field of image compression, we are not really sure what that metric should be. We have all kinds of perceptual metrics, and I will be using one of them today. It's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. Um, in any case, there's a lot of research to be done here. We'd like to have a single model, ideally, because we'd like to be able to deploy this easily and not have to deal with having to download multiple image compression models depending on the quality level. Additionally, um, I think it would be great to have a compression method that's progressive so that while users are downloading an image, they can already be displayed a preview, especially this is important for slow connections. And I will be describing a method uh, which uh, achieves all these three, hopefully. So uh, how do we do image compression with neural networks? Uh, in this diagram, uh, what I would like you to focus on is the bottom left. Uh, in there, we have an input image, the original image, uh, which we run through a stack of convolutional RNNs. These convolutional RNNs reduce the spatial dimensionality every time we apply some. Finally, we have a binarizer layer. This takes floating point values and converts them into bits. This would be our bit stream. In order to decode, we have a stack of convolutional RNNs, each one being followed by a depth to space operation, which increases the spatial resolution of the image. And finally, we have an RGB transform layer, which gets back into the original RGB space. So what I just said right now will give us exactly one quality level but we would like to be able to have a varying uh, levels, level of quality. And in order to achieve that, we are instantiating this network many different times, as many times as we would like to achieve a particular quality level. However, we have a problem. What are we going to feed the network in the next time step? And what we do is we take the difference between the current predicted image and the original. And this is what we feed to the encoder. We essentially feed the residual as an input. And every time, we decode the full resolution image. So the topmost part of this network has to be able to encode in its state the full resolution image. This has a potential problem, which is that maybe we don't have enough capacity to encode the full resolution image on the decoder side. So we also analyzed an, a, a different approach where we do not have to have this uh, problem. And here we have um, the same first step as I described before. But in the next steps, instead of trying to reconstruct the full resolution image, we would actually try to reconstruct the current residual. And the final image, then, it will be the sum of residuals from all uh, reconstructed residuals from all iterations. So this is the addi additive reconstruction method. However, we do have a problem with this particular method, and that is, Every time we send an asset residual, the magnitude of its values will decrease because we are going to be higher and higher quality as we send more data. So the statistics will change from iteration to iteration. And this might be a problem if the encoder is not fully efficient in all possible ranges of values. 
So what we can do is we can take, we can take some ideas from audio and have uh, some form of automated gain control. So automated gain control would scale the residual that we try to encode and undo the scaling when we try to decode it. But if we do automated gain control, we now have another variable which would, we would need to send over the wire, therefore decreasing the compression rate. So there's a question, can we do automated gate control without sending this value? And the answer is yes. So in this diagram, uh, the block marked gain is actually a neural network. And this ne neural network will take as input the currently decoded image, and it will predict what gain factor to use. And because it only depends on the decoded image as opposed to the input or the residual, which is unknown, it is able to uh, have zero impact in terms of um, data. So um, by using this, we can now uh, try to minimize the problems induced by the varying statistics of residuals changing. Now, uh, I, I was mentioning we are using a stack of uh, convolutional RNNs. Um, this is an example in instantiation how we would do this in practice. Uh, and I would like to invite you to our poster or to read the paper to see the details. We actually tried many different types of convolutional RNNs, um, and uh, I think it will be interesting to see kind of what, what the variation is. But because we don't have too much time, I will try to instead illustrate some examples visually as opposed to focus on the exact numbers. So here what we have on the left-hand side is our bit stream. On the right-hand side is the currently decoded image. So in this case, we have multiple bit planes. If you look carefully, you'll be able to see the outline of this lighthouse in our bit stream. And you'll also be able to see a lot of regions which um, are completely uh, black or white, which indicates that we are not very efficient in this particular uh, bit stream. This is the first iteration from the algorithm. And what this means is that we might be able to use things like entropy coding, arithmetic coding in order to improve efficiency here. But let's look what happens in the second iteration, so when we send the next data packet. The bit stream becomes a lot more noisy. That means that the network is becoming more efficient at transmitting data. And if we look at one more iteration, it almost looks like white noise, which means that this architecture becomes more and more efficient as uh, it sends more data. It also means that we might be able to gain um, some additional performance from arithmetic coding, but maybe not so much as we send um, more data. So basically, when we go to higher quality levels. In order to do arithmetic coding, we require to have uh, some kind of predictive model. Uh, in order to um, have a model which is uh, amenable to images, we looked at pixel RNN and have a modified version of pixel RNN that can predict the probability of the next bit in the bit stream, given the spatial context, and also the fully decoded uh, set of bits up to this point. And because we have bits coming into packets, we have to depend on all previous packets as well. <coughs> um, so let's look a bit at some uh, performance measure. In this graph, on the x-axis, we have bits per pixel. On the y-axis, we have uh, a measure called uh, multi-scale structural similarity index, uh, which has been a pretty popular uh, perceptual metric for measuring uh, image, image differences. Uh, the results are on the Kodak data set. The bottom uh, solid line is JPEG-90, so this is a classical um, compression method. The dashed lines represent two of uh, our convolutional RNN methods with no entropy coding. Uh, if we do apply entropy coding, uh, we, we see a shift, and so are the solid lines, which means uh, increased uh, performance compared to the non-entropy coding uh, versions. And as you can see, as we have a higher bit rate, the gain uh, diminishes. Let's look at an example um, in more detail. So here is uh, one of the images from the Kodak data set, which is actually a pretty difficult image. And we have a zoomed in version on the railing uh, because it's one of the more difficult parts to encode of uh, this particular image. And here we have uh, various methods we can show how they do at uh, encoding this uh, particular patch. Um, 
at varying bit rates. Uh, we think that the rightmost uh, version is the best according to uh, the MSSC metric. Of course, it's kind of not clear which one is the best, but um, again, it, it's a field of perceptual metrics that we need to look at next. Uh, the code for this is available if you'd like to try it. It's also linked from our paper. Let's look at a full resolution image just to get give an idea about what's the difference between the various uh, compression methods. So this is a JPEG 4.2.0, uh, meaning um, YCBCR with a sampling of 2 for uh, C-chroma. So clearly, there are a lot of artifacts. This is WebP, a much more modern codec. It does a far, far better job than JPEG at the same bitrate. And this is our um, approach. Uh, which, uh, compared to WebP, it has roughly the same amount of detail, but we think that it has better color reproduction. And the reason is that WebP internally is also using chroma subsampling, which we do not do. So we go from RGB to RGB. Um, with that said, uh, I've only been comparing this work against JPEG, which is clearly a very outdated uh, codec. Uh, we have a technical report, which is on archive, which takes this method and adds a few uh, additional features. And these additional features actually can have a huge impact. Making the method competitive, uh, at least in RGB, MSSIM, uh, to the best uh, currently available keyframe compression methods from H.265, in this graph, uh, it being BPG. So uh, if you'd like to uh, hear more uh, about uh, our work in compression, please do buy our poster. And we will have a lot more results uh, to show. And I think it will be a quite interesting discussion, especially if you have any thoughts on what perceptual metrics we should be focusing on, because clearly this is an area in which there's a lot more work to be done. Mahalo. Thank you.